A CIA drone strike in Yemen has reportedly killed a top al-Qaeda leader in late January of this new year. Qasem al Ramy, the leader of AQAP, has a long history of evading U.S. personnel. His group claimed responsibility for the latest shooting at a Florida naval base in Pensacola. He had planned to assassinate the U.S. ambassador to Yemen, and he was captured and sentenced for that plot, but then escaped in 2006. He even had ties to the infamous underwear bomber. Now, President Trump has hinted at this on Twitter, but DOD officials have declined to further comment on those reports. For more on this, let's turn to former Pentagon official Mike Maloof. Uh, so, Mike, this guy has been a slippery character. He's gotten away a number of times, uh, even from SEAL Team 6 back in 2017. That operation led to the, the death of Chief Petty Officer Bill Owens. So if a U.S. drone strike did, in fact, kill this guy, why won't the Pentagon take ownership of this would-be success? Well, they're still trying to confirm it. As you point out, he's been a, he's been a slippery dude. Yeah. So, uh, and, and we've had this on other occasions, particularly in remote areas in Yemen, uh, when uh, we've announced a few times that uh, uh, assassination candidates right. were killed right. and uh, they were not. Multiple uh, so, times. Multiple times. So I don't think we have full confirmation on this, and uh, and I think once once they do, then it'll be. Now the problem with it, even if he's killed, yeah. uh, let's say they get him, uh, it doesn't do away with AQAP, uh, Al Qaeda in the uh, Arab Peninsula. Oh, yeah. so, but uh, and I suspect that AQAP is going to focus less on the U.S., even though it took credit for. Uh, the P Pensacola thing and concentrate more on Saudi Arabia. Really? Yeah, that's what I think. That's where I think they AQAP is going to uh, put its uh, greater resources. And if he indeed was killed, the the ability to get new candidates up sure. is, is not going to be a problem. There's it'll cause a, a delay. Yeah, yeah, there's always a pipeline of these guys, right? Oh yeah, it'll it'll cause a might, might cause a slight slowdown. But when the new one comes on board, then yeah. they're good to go. Now the president keeps touting that, you know, ISIS is decimated. You and I, we, we've talked about this. We know that's not yeah, true. Right. Uh, they're just reforming. They're right. morphing. Uh, but there has really been limited coverage on al-Qaeda. So in the terror world, is al-Qaeda staging this comeback to the main stage? Well, it has, and it's been a very quiet uh, comeback. They are much stronger today in Syria, for example, than they used to be. And part of the problem is that you have more people because they don't like what ISIS has done and the yeah. fact that too that they're decimated they got to go someplace uh, if you're going to be a professional terrorist you got to go you got to go to you, you, you know change a team. Jo yeah you got to go change jobs so we're seeing some go, uh, go that direction they're 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 linking up with uh, al qaeda al qaeda al qaeda's approach is much different than than ISIS even though their goals appear to be similar but but their methodology is right. different and in fact that's one of the things that um, uh, 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 Zawahiri, yes. uh, uh, who's uh, the head of Al Qaeda, liked about ISIS is that it, it, it ensured greater uh, recruits and allowed them to, to reformulate. Al yeah, it allowed them to reformulate, and because they were getting all the uh, all the flack and all the uh, destruction, right, and allowed Al Qaeda to flourish. Well, I, I recall they they even criticized ISIS yeah. for being too brutal. Yeah, they did, and they and, and that goes that goes way back and. Uh, uh, but 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 Al Qaeda ha is growing constantly. It's much stronger. It's much stronger today in Syria. We're seeing it grow more in Iraq, and we're yeah. also seeing it begin to flourish in Afghanistan. So let me ask you this then: Has yeah. the U.S. been underestimating AQAP? Uh, no, I think they watch them because of, of the potential. Because they were a threat to the U.S. Uh, they had some American citizens, uh, Al Alaki, who was yeah, yeah. Uh, who was droned, uh, right, and, and his son, uh, yeah, and his son, and and uh, that that was potentially a, a major threat. But uh, but there seems to be less threat to the U.S. from uh, AQAP, even though they had that capability. Uh, they they did take credit for the uh, Pensacola thing, and that's something that's going to probably ratchet uh, concerns up a little more. Now, now, speaking about stuff happening stateside, yeah. uh, I want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, there are no ties to this particular case, but I want to bring up Al Qaeda in Phoenix, Arizona. 
it, it's, an, un, it's an unrelated incident. It, it's a man by the name of Ali Youssef Ahmed right. Al Nouri, yep. who has been living in the Phoenix suburbs for more than a decade, working as a driving instructor of mm -hmm. all things, was apparently a wanted man. He's accused of uh, leading an Al Qaeda group that allegedly killed two Iraqi policemen some 14 years ago on the streets of Fallujah. How does a guy like this disappear, fly under the radar for this long, and then it turns out he's living in broad daylight amongst regular mm -hmm. civilians in Phoenix? Yeah, how and he got into the U.S. appears to be uncertain at this point, but the fact that he kept a low profile, took a regular uh, job, a legal job, uh, he constituted basically a sleeper, uh, what we would call a sleeper. He. Uh, and when Al Qaeda wants to uh, cause wreak havoc in the United States, he'd be one of those they'd call on to, uh, unless, unless somewhere he's renounced it. I haven't right. seen any evidence of that. Right. But uh, the fact that he's wanted in Iraq right now, right. I, I think there will probably be extradition uh, of him eventually. But how has he been living here for this many years? And I mean, do you think the authorities had eyes on him or, or did they just kind of accidentally find well, him? Well, I think they probably had eyes on him for some time. The fact that they were able to find him, uh, they probably were uh, monitoring him, uh, looking at him as a potential sleeper, seeing who his networks mm. were, uh, who else were his, who did he associate with, were, what were their links, and, mm. and, and try to uh, build what, what appears to be what this network looked like right. in order to uh, hit it whenever they're ready. And so now they were ready, they just picked him up? And well, they picked him up, but uh, there may be others that they're right. watching as well. From, but from analyzing and, and, and taking intelligence on, on what he was doing, doing intelligence on him, they were probably were able to find associates and uh, they, they could probably go down. And it could be nationwide. Wow. It may not just be in Phoenix. He might be a bigger fish he than may we be know. A, he may be. He, he may have a network and he may have been working all these years, even though he does his day job. Right. He also works with others. And the way that Al-Qaeda oh, has operated is not by phones and what have you. They send couriers. He may travel periodically or send somebody. Uh, they, they, cut, they try to uh, low profile the, wow. the means of communication. That, I mean, wow. And Driving it, it, instructor exi in Phoenix. It exists just, here. It exists in the United States. You never know. Yeah. You, you really, it could be anybody. Yeah. You never know. All right. Interesting turn of events. We will keep our eyes on AQAP. Mike Maloof, as always, appreciate your expertise. My pleasure. Thank you.